I still, to this day, do not know why you would think it's a strategic move to embrace the Cheneys. One of the most frustrating things about being on the left is being correct 99% of the time about failed democratic strategy. And that was the case with Liz Cheney and the Kamala Harris campaign. So in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly how this was a massive disaster and how clearly I called it and everybody called it. This isn't like me saying, oh, look at me, I predicted the future. No, this is just looking at the facts, the data, the evidence showcasing no one ever liked Liz Cheney, no one likes her father, Dick Cheney. The idea that she would publicize and run on those endorsements is completely insane, and it bears out in the results. So let me first start with this. I discussed this in a previous video, my breakdown of the election, but it's worth revisiting here. This was 2020 with Joe Biden and Trump. So Joe Biden won 5% of Republican voters. Fast forward. Kamala Harris won 4%. Despite the fact that Kamala Harris did more to campaign with Republicans. You could also look at the moderate vote as well. It's worth taking a look at that. People that identify as independent or something else. So Biden won 54% of those independent voters. Harris won 49% of those independents. And there's a bigger gap in the middle there. So to be clear, Trump won 46% of them. And uh, in 2020, he only won 41% of them. So again... Harris running a more conservative campaign than Joe Biden and l netting less conservative or Republican voters. Actually, on that point as well, even separate from party. In 2020, people uh, were asked on most political matters, do you consider yourself liberal, moderate, or conservative? So Joe Biden won 14% of conservative voters. Kamala Harris, 9%. Now, I want to be clear, this isn't just because of Liz Cheney, obviously. There's a variety of issues there. But it goes to show that running to the right as a campaign strategy for the Democratic Party is always going to be a loser. Even if you win, that you, you will win despite that strategy. You likely would have won in larger numbers if you actually campaigned towards the vast majority of people who don't normally vote, which lean more progressive. We're talking especially young voters. But that wasn't the case here. The campaign ran to the right and didn't get any of those votes. That's where we get to uh, Liz Cheney. So Liz Cheney was an electoral fiasco for Kamala Harris. This from John Nichols on the 12th. Writing conservatives back Trump by bigger percentages than in 2020 and time spent with Cheney prevented Harris from reaching out to the voters that she needed. So I'm going to first play for you, before I get to uh, a couple of points he makes here, play for you a clip. This is from my video in uh, three weeks ago. So before the election, let me, I'll get the exact date. I don't know why it doesn't show it here. There we go. October 22nd. All right. So again, I'm not, I'm not saying this to gloat and be like, ha ha, look at me. It's just <laughs> to show that maybe if the Democratic Party wanted to win and didn't just care about corporate donors and ignoring all progressive policy... Maybe they should actually listen to the left when it comes to, at the very least, strategy in order to win an election. Liz Cheney, Dick Cheney, these are not popular people. They're not popular with Democrats, obviously. They aren't popular with independents. They aren't popular with Republicans. I still, to this day, do not know why you would think it's a strategic move to embrace the Cheneys. It's possible there are a few people out there that are moved by these sorts of embracing of the Cheneys. And by embracing, I mean, Harris is doing campaign events with Liz Cheney. <laughs> it's one thing to, you know, have an endorsement out in the ether. You can't control it. It's another to bring the person into your campaign, the person that is not popular and may actually be hurting you. This is the, even if there is, you know, a handful of people that for some reason are now turned on to Kamala Harris are going to vote because Liz Cheney's endorsement you are, that is offset by the kind of people you are losing. That was brilliant political strategist David Dole calling out the uh, failure of the Kamala Harris campaign to bring in the Liz Cheney endorsement before the election happened, and we all knew it. Now, I want to be clear, again, it wasn't just me. We're talking, anybody who is center left to left knew 
that this was a stupid strategy, that Liz, Ch Liz Cheney lost her own state. So already off the bat, we know she's not popular with Republicans. She's against Trump. That's the vast majority of Republican voters. That means they're going to hate you. And in addition to that, why would Democrats like Liz Cheney? Why would that bring out voters that weren't going to vote for Kamala Harris already? Why would that bring out people who were, you know, uh, sort of disillusioned with the entire system? Why would they come in because of Liz Cheney, one of the quintessential neocons in, in Washington? Why would that bring them out to vote? Just so stupid all around. John Nichols here uh, breaks it down, saying, Liz Cheney campaigned with Kamala Harris in hopes of getting battleground state Republicans to back the Democrat. The effort failed miserably. Support from Republicans uh, for the Democratic ticket collapsed, especially in towns where Cheney campaigned. Liz Cheney and the Cheneys generally are so unpopular that Republicans came out in bigger numbers <laughs> to vote against Kamala Harris and for Donald Trump because they were reminded, at least partially because of this, they were reminded of, of how much they uh, hate Liz Cheney and the uh, connection that she now had with the Democratic Party. He also writes here, the NBC exit poll showed conservative support for the Democratic ticket fell from 14% in 2020 to 9% in 2024. I showed that earlier. Support from self-identified Republicans for the Democratic ticket also went down in the national survey. And uh, this is, I think, the ultimate point here. He ends on this in his piece. Every day was precious, and every signal sent to potential voters was significant. The days spent with Cheney and the resources expended to promote endorsements from neoconservative Republicans cost the Democrats in significant ways. They sent a signal to potential Democratic voters, many of who recalled the Iraq War and other Cheney projects, that the focus of the campaign was on outreach to the right. They ate up time that could have been spent campaigning in union halls and in working-class communities with figures such as UAW Union President Sean Fain and Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. They burned up time that could have been devoted to sincere, if difficult, conversations about Gaza. They foreclosed opportunities to reach out to Latino communities in swing states. The list goes on and on. The time wasted campaigning with Liz Cheney is something that is, is hard to even fathom, considering how short the campaign was. Because, again, I think a lot of the blame here goes on Joe Biden for obvious reasons. He should have never even attempted to run for a second term. So there was never a proper primary process, never a, a real, you know, proper long campaign to, to fight this out. But even apart from that, with that short time that she had, using so much of it in the final couple of months to try and reach out to right-wing voters who were never going to vote for her, because why would they vote for her when they have their guy? The attempt to continue doing that again and again and losing in the face of that again and again, and even after losing, look at what they're blaming now. Look at shows like Morning Joe or Bill Maher. They're blaming woke. <laughs> like, go back. It, 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 it's so disingenuous. At no point, and I don't think Kamala Harris even discussed trans rights at any point during her campaign. Never discussed uh, the issue with uh, race and policing. The campaign was largely focused on immigration. Again, trying to move to the right. They moved to the right on immigration, on uh, immigration, on on crime, on democracy for obvious reasons, and on uh, abortion. And, you know, she won on the issue when it comes to abortion. But you had the, here this, this massive gap where there was also a major failure when it came to Joe Biden and all of these pandemic-era programs ending during his presidency, which led to people thinking, hey, I had this help, now it's gone while Biden's president, while the Democrats are in power, I'm going to vote for the other guy. But... All of this opportunity in, this, in these 100 days to actually, you know, excite people out to vote, which she began to do in the first month, picking Tim Walls as the VP pick, brilliant choice. But then they neutered him and didn't allow him to discuss why he's so popular in his state with the one seat majority passing a, a litany of progressive policy, including a guaranteed breakfast and lunch for kids at school. Like these were popular issues, popular, you know, kitchen table issues that simply went undiscussed largely, or if they were discussed, and to be fair, look, Harris did try at, at points to discuss an economic message, but so much of the campaign was tied up in these sorts of right-wing endorsements and this embracing or this attempt to reach out to the right right-wing voter that they were never going to get. It was a complete waste of time. And it's, 
you know, I, I hope there are lessons learned here, but it feels like such a repeat of 2016, where Clinton failed to reach out to working class voters. And who did they blame? Bernie Sanders and progressive voters. <laughs> when that wasn't the problem. When in fact, Bernie voters voted for Clinton in a larger number than Clinton voters voted for Obama in 2008. But again, all that data, all that info goes out the window when all their entire focus is on is blaming the left. They can't for a second even think that it's their fault because that would mean having to face the reality that campaigning with the backs of massive corporations and, and elites is not popular. The reason why Trump can do it and get away with it is because he has a, an economic message that is a, a lie. He blames immigrants, but it's one that he has an answer to. Whereas the Democratic Party tries to be all things to everyone and ends up failing and losing.